Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to learn about the do while loop in VBA. We'll discuss the pros and cons. We'll see how you can test for a condition at either the top or the bottom of the loop. And we'll learn about the exit do command. We are continuing our VBA loops series. We've already done for next and while when. Today, we're going to look at do while. This, of course, is a developer level class. So if you've never done any programming before, go watch my intro to VBA video. It'll teach you everything you need to know in about 20 minutes. Also, make sure you understand how variables work and be sure to watch my video on building a status box. This is how I choose to display information for the user is in a nice text box on a form that I call the status box. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. All right, yesterday we learned about the while when loop or just the while loop. Today we're going to talk about the do while loop, which is very similar. And tomorrow we're going to talk about do until, which is similar still. All right, they all have their own little minor differences. Do while is written like this. It's do while some condition is true. Do your code and then the word loop. Okay. For example, if you're dealing with a counter, set the counter x equals zero. Do while x is less than 10 x equals x plus one and then loop and it'll keep doing that okay you'll get zero one two up to nine as soon as it's ten it'll drop out now the nice thing about a do while loop well one of the nice things is that you can check the condition either at the beginning or at the end of the loop this forces it to run at least one time through so for example same thing x equals zero do x equals x plus one that's going to happen at least one time and then loop while x is less than 10. And now it's going to loop and you'll get the same results. But where you check for the condition depends on whether or not you get at least one iteration. This will usually happen in a situation where you're getting a value from a user or you're reading something out of a table, right? Up here, maybe you have an input box that says type in some value. Okay. Depending on what they type in, the loop may run once or it may not. If you check for the condition up front, the loop might not run at all, right? If instead of x equals zero, right? If you have the user inputting a number with like an input box or on a form field, if they type in a hundred, then the loop never runs. And if there's something in here to display a message, you'll never see it. But in this case, that loop is going to run at least one time. So if they type in a hundred, it's going to do some stuff and then exit the loop. Okay. So that's why it's important to know whether you check at the top or the bottom of the loop. Another nice thing about the do while loop is that it does have an exit do command. All right. So if you want to check for something in the middle of the loop, like if X mod five is zero, remember that if X is evenly divisible by five, then exit the loop. It'll jump right out. You don't have to worry about setting an abort variable like we did with the while loop. All right. So pros and cons, you can evaluate it at the beginning or the end of the loop and it allows the exit do. Cons, there's no built in counter again, like a while loop. You can also run into endless loops this way if you're not careful. And the syntax is a little more difficult than a while when loop, but not much. You get used to it. Whichever one you decide to use is completely up to your preference. They all perform pretty much the same. Let's take a look at some sample code. OK, here I am back in that tech help free template. I'm using the same database that we used for the for and the while when loops. Let's do a do while loop. Let's do a do while loop. <laughs> I'm going to copy the while when loop button. We'll just stick it down here right there. This will be the do while loop. We'll come up here. We'll make that the do while button. Right click, build event, go into our code editor. All right, there it is right there. Now I'm going to come down and steal the code from the while when loop so I can illustrate the differences. I'm just going to copy that and we're going to paste it up here and show you the differences between the two. All right, so instead of while when, we're going to change this to a do while and then loop down here. Now, since do while loop supports the exit command, we don't need abort. So we can get rid of abort from here. We can get rid of abort right there. We can get rid of abort here. Okay. And right here, instead of saying abort equals true, we just say exit do, and it'll drop out of the loop. See, 
right there that makes it a little bit easier and aside from that it's gonna it's gonna run just like a while when loop did all right i'm gonna i'm gonna rem this one out right now just so we can see the whole thing run without the exit in it all right save that come back over here close it open it run it and there you go one through ten total is 55 now let's switch it so that it's do and then loop while x is less than or equal to 10. We're putting the condition test at the end of the loop. All right. Run it. And there you go. Okay. Now, in this particular example, you got the exact same data. All right. But what if I'm getting data from the user? Let's say I got a text box up here. And I normally do have a text box up here. I just deleted it. Let me grab it off the other database. The tech help free template normally has this text box here. I didn't think I was going to need it, but I do need it. So let me grab it. I'm going to paste it right here. Let's put it over here. All right. And let's say uh, user data. Let's call this user data and it's get rid of its control source and its format. So the user can type in whatever they want. Okay. Let's go into our while loop now or excuse me, our do while loop. And let's say here, let's start off this X as at user data. All right, X is user data. So it's gonna start at whatever number the user types in and then add it up, up until 10, right? So save it, come back out here. All right, if I put in a zero and run the loop, I get zero through 10. If I put in a five, Look at that, I get five through 10. If I put in 11, I get 11 there. If I put in 20, I get a 20 there. See that? Because the do is up top and the conditional check is at the bottom, it's gonna run at least once, no matter what. But if I put the conditional test up at the top of the loop, right, do while, okay, it might not do anything. Save that back out here and now let's try it let's put in a four okay four through ten let's put in an eight all right let's put in a 16 and nothing see because it checked for the condition first and didn't do any of the stuff in here so whether you put this at the top or the bottom of the loop all depends on whether or not you want this stuff to run at least once and that's completely different and it's really just up to your program all right, and then if you want to still put any other check in here like that divide, you know, divisible by five thing, then there's your exit do. So if I come in here now and I put in a three and I hit go, boom, it stopped at 25 because that's divisible by five. Okay, so you see the do while loop has a little more flexibility than a basic while loop. You could still do all this with a while loop, but you got to use if then statements in here and an abort variable and all kinds of other stuff. So. It's just kind of, it, it bakes some of that control into it. You just have to understand the structure, that's all. And that's what I'm here for, is to teach you this stuff. If you like learning this stuff, if you enjoy learning with me, check out my developer lessons. There's a link there, I'll put a link down in the links section down below, in the text below the video, you can click on it and check it out. And I've got lots and lots of different lessons for you to learn Visual Basic the way it's supposed to be learned, by from me. No, <laughs> no check it out if you're interested. Above all else, I like to have fun in my classes. As you can see, I'm a big goofball. But there you go. There is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. 
But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. 
Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.